Yeah. yeah. Okay. So before we start the Terraform, uh, can we... you turn on the recording so my brother will get that part as well? Yeah, yeah, recording is enabled already. Yeah. Oh. So what I was, yeah, it's enabled. So he will be, uh, you know, able to uh, watch the recording, and he, if he has the doubt, so we can, you know, again let him know if miss anything or something like that. So I'll connect with him one to one also. Okay. So let's jump into the, this. Uh, so I was saying why we started. So there is something uh, called Git. So Git is something where we will be storing. Uh, GitHub is something actually which will helping us to re store our data sort of code sort of data like only the code right and uh, git is something which will help us to you know manage the code right so these are two two uh, things one is uh, just a repository another one is uh, just uh, you know uh, we call it um, uh, version control system right so what is version control system we'll learn in this session so I will share my screen and let me open the today's slides for you. So we are supposed to be doing it in uh, in the morning actually, my morning. That would be your evening actually. But yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm sharing my screen here. Let me know once it is visible. Is it to all? Yes. So I hope we are good to go and we are good to start, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So get uh, a version control. So what, what do we understand by the version first? Like why we uh, learning the version control? What is the version? Do you understand the meaning of version? It's also known as the source control. That's the practice of tracking and managing changes to software code. No, uh, no uh, it's, it's there, but the thing is, I'm just asking for the version. What do you understand by the version? People also say something. It's like people, a copy. Copy version is like a copy. Yeah, so people say, na. Uh, sometime you uh, in the childhood, maybe you gone through someone's uh, WhatsApp status or maybe uh, Facebook status. So uh, I have I have upgraded my version. They say, and this is my new version, something like that. And some say it's like I'm missing my old version, something. So what do you understand by the version? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a change in state. <laughs> Right, right. It is a change in states. I mean, it's a particular form of something, you know, uh, having some certain different, but the thing is same, right? Certain difference, just just cert certain difference, certain level of difference, but things is entirely same. Let's take an example of a thing which oh. was back in 2019, uh, maybe in, uh, uh, we can say in uh, 1990, we can say, or maybe in 90s, right? That was built by someone. And uh, then again, after 100 years, uh, 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 you know, his uh, great, 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 uh, you know, uh, son came in and uh, he uh, he renovated it, right? And that that would be the new version of that building, right? It is completely in, you know, some he must have added some features on it. Let, let's say that um, you previously that uh, building has only two gates. Now he added two more gates or he added two more rooms or something like that, added some, you know, high tech technologies according to this, right? So these are just uh, nothing but the, uh, another version of that building would be, right? Yes. Make sense? Awesome, awesome. So we are good to go and we are starting with the first slide. So first slide, uh, as we always have the agenda. So in the agenda, uh, we will be learning what, why, and how the version control uh, why we need it and uh, how it works and uh, you know why uh, we need it and what exactly the, it is right and uh, then we will be learning the centralized and decentralized control uh, you know version control system what they are exactly so first I will be you know asking you people what what do you understand by centralized and decentralized and then we will you know introduce the git git is very powerful tool nowadays in uh, IT industry this is the one like everybody uses 
like everybody means like even your uh, you know trainee even your software developer even your um, you know any any sort of developer devops uh, and uh, python developer will be using this also the java spring boot every, everyone will be using even your manager will be using it and uh, your you know super level of manager will be using it so this is this is something like everybody should know right this is a common thing common practice so this is this is the very important thing but but it is just nothing it is just a, a concept and it's help us to manage the code only okay okay then we'll start with the basic gets concept then we will setting up your git account will make a you know git account which is uh, free where you can you know practice the git commands then we'll you know uh, we'll make you familiar with the uh, basic git commands then uh, we'll say the what are good uh, you know practices to work with git right so th this is what we are going to cover in next uh, 10 20 or maybe it'll take uh, 40 45 minutes and then if we, we find time so we will be starting with the terraform okay 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 so we can start excited <laughs> you came in the picture right all right all right, all right. Okay. 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 So, uh, let's talk about the center. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about this centralized version control. Uh, what is it? What is it? Can you tell me uh, anyone? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Anyone? Uh, maybe Solange, Samira. From, Just from my, I think centralized version yeah. of is like the yeah. high, high the uh, how can I put it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anyone else? Please. Very nice. Very nice. Is like the main or a general some uh, version? Well, I think the server that contains all version files, like it says there. Yes, yes. Any? Managed, managed by one, one person or one server. Right, right, right. So yeah, you guys are a little, little bit uh, familiar, and you know it. Well, that's very nice. So uh, I'll let you know what what exactly it is. So uh, a single server means a single server. It could be any server. It could be your local server or anywhere that's contained all the versions and every file, right? So uh, that is the centralized means uh, everyone is working on a very same server, and then like the conflicts would be there. The, it's it's very hard to manage actually, because. Uh, a one is just checking uh, out and B is also checking out. There are some files and there are multiple versions. Right. So this is the, uh, you know, uh, centralized server. So it, it is something like having a single server. Right. Let's move to uh, move ahead. Uh, so uh, disadvantage of a uh, centralized system, like because this used to be in the market and in the picture. Uh, till I believe, uh, you know, this, uh, 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 you know, uh, decentralized system came in. So till then, we, uh, you know, all of the IT professionals were using this uh, centralized, you know, distribution system and uh, centralized version control system. Okay. So these are some disadvantages. Single point of failure it means like if you are uh, working on the same file, uh, maybe uh, two people are working on a um, repository. Right, the so single point it will be fail because both are pushing at the same time and pushing on the very same system, right? So it's it's like uh, if you are walking, the other person cannot walk, right? Because uh, it's it's managed in the single server, right? It's hard to get the you know uh, if if you you know corrupted uh, your uh, you know hard drive, it's very hard to back up everything if you lost it, right? But in the decentralized, it's not uh, like that because it, it, it like uh, we have it in, in centralized, we have it in single server. If we lost the server or its hard disk get corrupted, so it's very hard to, you know, um, get a uh, backup of a recovery of your code, right? So th these are some advantages, sorry, disadvantages, okay? 
Now something new came in the picture that was a distributed version control system. Uh, allow me a minute. I'm getting a call. Uh, just a minute. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so sorry for this. So we are talking about the distributed uh, distributed version control. So any idea, rough idea, anyone? Samara. This is the server that has been distributed to everyone. It's found in different servers. There is a copy from different computers so in different server. Right. So yeah. So in this, like every you know user and developer has a copy, right? Locally. So they can locally you know manage it like uh, um means like in locally add new code, modify code, and once they feel like we are good to go, then they can push the code, right? Then they can uh, send the code to the uh, server, right? So what what happens like they are free here they are not uh, you know occupied with uh, they are not waiting in the queue for the other to finish the task and then they will do it right having full version history on drive like every version history is available line right? right suppose one you four uh, we four are working on a project first some Ira make some changes that MLA then Solange right so we should have the first one right the first one there would be the empty file right so we should have that also right. The first file will be the empty file where you know Samira started working. Fast it is it's fast and you know your repository will be operated from the you know operation will be remotely so you can remotely access your repositories right. So these are the distributed system we can call these uh, uh, advantage of it because it's it's having uh, you know distributed means it's uh, distributed over the internet and uh, you have your repository somewhere and that's repository having your code and then you have a local copy as well, right? Make sense? Yeah. Anyone have doubt? Um, so with this one, everybody is working on the code at the same time. And is it updating on everyone's end at the same time as well? I don't understand. Can you please come again? So you said with the other one, um, only one person can work on the code at the on the code at a time. Mm -hmm. So this one, um, so different developers can work on the same code at the same time. Now, when they are working on it, is it getting updated at everyone's end? At that time, no, it, at will, it will not reflect when we are working. When we will. Uh, meant to you know uh, update it then only it will update it okay yeah we'll the live okay we we'll do the hands-on quickly no problem okay then uh, yeah. so if you, you know manage some time to go through there will be a video for you you can go through this video and uh, learn more about the centralized decentralized because it's just a concept uh, overview i have given you but Exactly, that is more than enough for any, uh, you know, technical interviews or any you know, person to have. This is just you to understand. If you wanted to go deep down with you, and you can go with the video also. Now, introduction. What is your breaking? Um, Samira, please mute yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, okay. So, what is Git? Can anyone tell me now? I already explained a bit. So,
or it is used to store codes and used to manage your codes. Well, if you uh, were very attentive in my previous session, so there was a, a term which was common here about the git. Can you please recall something and you will find something very interesting here. I'm giving you uh, one minute of time to tackle your mind. Uh, we uh, repository or what? Uh, in my previous session, in my previous Linux section, there was uh, there uh, there was this guy common, you know, the Linux. Linux guy. Yeah. Tower. Right. Okay. Uh, Tower was the guy uh, uh, who like uh, was involved in the Linux Linux also, right? Yes. Yes. So uh, it is uh, designed and developed by him, <laughs> right? And uh, it's very, you know, high performance, right? It's very fast, very fast, and it's more efficient. It works like a, you know, a backbone of uh, managing the code, right? It's a backbone. Otherwise, uh, you will be wasting uh, entire year to just manage a code, and that could be managed by Git in just no time. To figure out the things, if you wanted to roll back. And you will spend uh, entire year to figure it out, and then you will be able to get something. Otherwise, you will just need to, you know, if you wanted to back up a code of every day, so you will be needing a very large amount of storage. It could be ter in terabyte uh, based on your, you know, re repository or project size. So it's very fast, very uh, efficient, strong. It is very strong. Uh, like uh, changes, whenever you make the, you know, uh, changes. So in safeguard uh, against accidental changes, it's it's very safe because you can roll back anytime, right? Now, yeah. next one is some characteristics of uh, Git, right? So the characteristics of Git are a strong support of non uh, non linear development and full distributed means it's fully distributed like. Every and all of your employees, all of your if you have thousands of employees in your company, all of them can have a copy of code. They can learn the code, they can deploy and they can push. They can do the contribution without you know giving the codes in pen drives or something, right? If you remember the time, there was a time we used to share the things in pen drive. You remember? Still, we share the things in pen drive, right? You mean the hard drive, the yeah, the pen drives, hard drives, floppies. There was a time, right? But yeah, in the distributed thing, it's become very easy, right? Efficient of handling large project. As I said, the thousands and uh, ten thousand people are working on same project, so anybody can you know uh, manage their projects. Any sort of project can be managed. Simple design. It's very simple, like just like you know um what do we call it it's very simple just straightforward no complication just like uh, you know previously in the centralized distribution there was so 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 many complications now some concept so uh, samara will walk us through uh, one by one through this slide samara Samira. Yeah. Yeah, please walk us through this slide. Basic Git concepts. Yeah. So what are basic Git concepts? Uh, we will be learning in this slide and Samira will walk us through. <laughs> Git has the following three states for five. Yeah. So basically Git has uh, three basic states. Right? This is something like you will be asked. Uh, you can be any in any interview. They uh, will be asking you such questions. What are the stages of Git? So you can tell these three stages are Git having. So uh, Samira, one by one. Committed. Yeah. So what it does it mean, Samira? It means that the data is safely stored in local database. Yeah. So uh, Git does have it to the local database. Whenever you make changes in the code, 
and add uh, committed on it so it manages the things uh, in the until unless you push the code in the remote repository right the next one is modified which means mm -hmm. the profile is changed but not committed to database yet yes so which means uh, you make the changes in the file but not committed it to the database right once you once you make the changes in the you know uh, repository you push the it then it will reflect it to the remote 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 repository now next is this that it means that the file is marked to go into next commit snapshot right so basically snapshot is just a point of time uh, you know a record of a repository code right so point of time you can track the point of time like at 2 pm or maybe yesterday what was the stage of my code right so these are the you know snapshot commits let's move ahead okay now emily please walk us through this slide um so commit so mm -hmm. commit um, contains a snapshot yeah we explain already snapshot the next one please it represents checked in version of files and all directories mm -hmm. what does it mean of files. um so it means the files that have been um, pushed or submitted to the database. Yeah, so the file, whatever, whatever file you have pushed to the database or maybe they went to the repository, so it will be uh, checked by the version and the directory where it was exactly. Okay. Now the next one is uniquely identified 46 char string, right? So the uh, unique ID is provided to each commit Right, each commit has the, its unique ID, which which you use to you know restore your code also. The next one. It has a reference to the parent commit. Mm -hmm. And it is tree based. It has a tree based structure when branching. Yeah, so it has tree based structure. You know the tree, right? One is connected with another one. One leaf is connected with another leaf, right? So like one leaf is uh, you know connected with the other leaf also by some you know uh, other uh, right so you understand I think they say parent child um, yeah uh -huh. it's to like okay. uh, yeah it's the parent child like uh, you know uh, reference to the parent commits like the previous commit will be available and the parent commit will be available there okay it's not like that you push something new so old file will be deleted it's, it would be Okay, now, uh, Sulans, uh, explain this something. What do you, what's come in your mind when you see this? Okay. So, I see the local repository, which is like where the code is stored. And I see the different type of files or scripts that can be committed like the HTML and CSS and JSON. Mm -hmm. And the different type times are like different times when this code is being committed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me give you an So, uh, in the local, when you started working in the local at, uh, you know, 12, uh, 6 you started uh, on this date, 2013, there was a file, right? Uh, HTML, CSS, and JSON. These three files you have for a website, maybe, or something. Then you make another commit. This will be your first commit. Then you make another commit as uh, 17031, right? So this was your next commit. Next, you made a uh, 40, uh, 030, right? Then next, you made uh, 
at this time 1152 right so these were your some commits so each commit has a rollback point so any time you can go to this point any time you can go to this point any time you can go to this point and see the what what changes i made right? so all of the changes in here right? okay yeah so launch yeah it just there's background noise i don't know uh it's not from mine it, maybe it was coming from samira okay okay sorry it's okay now mm -hmm. yeah please uh go, go walk us through this slide me yeah yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> the the walking tree and um sorry the walking tree and index walking tree consists of five that you are currently working on index is a staging area where new commits are prepared it acts as an interface between repository and working tree mm -hmm. changes made on the working tree will not be com will not be committed directly to the repository. They need to be staged on indexed first. So. Right. So, uh, <laughs> Salan, you walk us through, but uh, can you ask other one? They understand what they understand with it, people? Um, Okay, let me let me explain. So walking tree where you start the walking right in the local where you start working. That's your local uh, walking tree right in index 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 is something like, you know, you uh, you, you are in the staging area where you uh, have new uh, prepared a new commit right and it is like, like a, a interface between the repository and walking tree right. So here you are like uh, uh, in an interface right. Then the next you make the changes in the working tree and will be committed to the directly to the repository, right? They need to uh, be in the stage on the index first, right? So the, these are the uh, your um, just a concept how it work. Like the first one is your working tree. Then you are uh, in the between in between the repository and the uh, your staging area, and then you are pushing it, right? Okay. Some these are some uh, images I have added so you can watch and you know uh, see these. These are just basic con uh, concepts. So that the first file is not registered in an index and something like that. Then you can you know see how these are being pushed and where from it getting. So this is your working tree. This is your index. Then this is your repository. So the, you started adding this file. Then it's sorry. This file CSS was already there. Then you know then you add the HTML file. Then it's came in the index, then you commit it, and then, then it's came into the repository, right? Remote repository and local repository. So remote repository is in stored somewhere, maybe in GitHub, GitLab, anywhere, and the local repository will be having in your local, right? So mm -hmm. now two people are working on the same file, same uh, time, simultaneously on same project, right? So one is, uh, let's say, Samhira, and, uh, and next one is Emily working on, and the, the file is, you know, remote repository is here. So they are pushing, pulling in the very same time, right? So this is it. So uh, remote repository. Uh, so Emily. Uh, remote repository. Yeah, what is it? Um, with remote repository, it is possible to have more than one repository at a time. An alias for each repository. So you can have an alias for each repository. Right. And sure, you can yeah. update it with fetch and pull commands. And you right. can also send updates with push. Right. So basically, uh, you can have multiple, uh, uh, you know, remote repository at the same time. You can have uh, a alias for each, uh, you know, alias for each of your repository. You can, uh, you know, update from uh, update with it using fetch and update pull command. Sorry, and uh, you know, you can send the update using push. Okay. I think we are good to go. Okay. So these are some uh, other concepts like the branching. So branch is an uh, you know 
uh, it's acts like a you know line of deployments like uh, you make a branch an active line of deployment it is like uh, if it, let's say your code is in a, uh, in a repository and in that repository we have two branches for like one 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 piece of code so one in which like we are directly working then testing and then we are you know putting a working code in a different repository okay so one will be there in deployment and one is the master right so these these are some concepts of uh, you know uh, branch so you can walk through this so we'll directly you know uh, showcase you with some of this uh, example so let's say uh, this was the branch uh, ab so from b if you will see this is a master branch from that we are making a you know a, a different different branches so a o x we make three branches from it and we can you know directly merge it to this branch right so uh, some in someone is making new release someone is doing some deployment someone is fixing right okay so there is something called merge conflict merge conflict uh, can you, anyone tell me what is merge conflict okay let me tell you so suppose samaira uh, work on the same file same line like the line number 20 samaira work and i also work on this very same line and i push she pushed then we we thought we should merge the both of the code our both of the codes right uh, we uh, she has some other changes also i have some other changes also in the very same file so this is called the merge conflict because uh, she edited on the line number 20 and i i also edited the line number 20 on the very same file so the version control system will say no uh, uh, you need to tell me like which line of code i want to have right so either you wanted to have the both of these line of code or you wanted to keep the samaira as one or the mine one right so it will ask you so these are the this is called the merge conflict when we started working on this very uh, same file at very same line of code okay make sense okay. yeah so we are good to go so this is a command to install git sudo apt get uh, install git or maybe uh, sudo yum install git uh, for the amazon linux and uh, you need your ssh key to allow your pushing so we will do this also so ssh key should be added your, into your repository if it is not public right and you need to configure your name globally so this is will be the all about the hands-on right so these are some commands we are going to learn about the gates the first command is in it it is it will initialize a repository you know uh, with git uh, file on it it will it will initialize a repository for you and uh, git add it will add to git like the, it will add your files to git and uh, git uh, rm rm is something like it will remove the file from the git git commit it's commits it it give you the stage it put the file to staging files and add some message to it and get checkout when you change the branch or file so it's checkout uh, branch it's it will uh, show you the branches like what all branches you have then we have the git push it's it's pushed your code to the remote repository and pull we pull the code it, these are very simple term right pull means uh, we're getting the code push means we are we're sending the code to remote right add means we are adding the code initialize means we are initializing okay so very simple so far we are so good yeah okay so these are some uh, practices we will be doing uh, and uh, i think we are good to do with some hands on there are some references also i have added some git chat sheet, cheat sheet data also added and some other reference uh, i am giving you so that you can walk through it right so let's uh, do it quickly so this was the concept of the git let's uh, let's make your first git account and uh, i'll let you know how you make a, your git account uh okay so uh you need to go to the github github.com and you need to sign up so uh, as i have already account so i'm not gonna create uh, where else i'm going to you know uh, tell you and help you to create your own account 
but this is the hands on so i'm going to do it and then you will need to do your own right after watching me and if you have multiple screens so you can follow me okay right so once you go here so i'm just signing in but you will need to sign up right just a simple account as like facebook or uh, instagram account you create just simple as it is so yeah so this these are my repositories in my uh, you know get but let's uh, make a new fresh one right so this is the new repository we are creating here so let's say we, i will keep it public for the time being because uh, in the private repository we need to add the access and uh, for access the very same concept like uh, doing ssh there this concept works here also okay so let's make uh, this uh, devops bootcamp okay sorry dab ops boots camp right one two k three so this is the name of your repository which will be stored here in the professor explorer and uh, you can add some descriptions uh, about this uh, repository so we are here to here to learn get right get right okay this is the your readme file you add the readme file so it will be the readme file tells you about the repository what sort of code is there how you will run it and everything about the dependency everything about there right and git ignore git ignore is something like there is some file you wanted to ignore and not, don't want it to send it to the uh, your remote repository right so there are some uh, they could be like your your aws credentials so the passwords so you never uh, add these things in the remote repository right so this is something you can add so in git uh, you know you can say like uh, maybe some java if you are working on a java so some java dependency file you can add you can add um, um, python if you are working on the python or maybe you can add some file that you have suppose you have a file call call uh, my my pass dot jv or something anything it could be right and you want you don't wanted to have this file here right means you wanted to ignore this file right so how you will do it i said i'll show you once we will be make the repository right? so let's create the repository and see this is our first repository which got created right but now we created it like we should have it in a local also right so how we will be having it uh we copy this we copy this and this is the HTTPS normal one and this is the SSH one. So uh, I guess uh, as it is public, so both of them will be work for us. But in, uh, you know, uh, private repository, it will not work. We will need to, you know, uh, we will need to make some handshaking. We will need to make some uh, credential sharing. Then only it will allow us. Okay. We're yeah, good. Okay. Let's go to your terminal anywhere. And... Um, in terminal if you say cd desktop it is visible it is visible yes and we have the devop in desktop we have i guess bootcamp right so in bootcamp uh, let's say do ls there are so many things let's make a let's make a, a repository if you remember this command mkdir right what are we doing we are making a rep uh, directory right mm -hmm. and say Right, so this is the, this is the git. Let's go to the git. Oh, that it is case sensitive. You should remember it also, right? Okay. So if we do the PWD here, so we are inside the git, right? So let's clear it. And now uh, say git clone, right? Clone clone means like we are uh, cloning the repository from a, a repository uh, remote to local. Okay. Paste your URL which you copied, and it it will say cloning, right? And you are done. So if you do ls here, so that remote repository is available here. If you see, this one is available here, right? And we wanted to see what inside now, right? So let's go to this and see what we have in this repository. So we only have this readme.md file where we added this, right, DevOps learning. But this, this is not the you know, only thing we wanted to have, right? So let's open this in the VS code. all right awesome so we are inside the repository here can you see so this was the readme.md file right we are here to learn git right 
and this was the git ignore file where we have these files to ignore right so we are ignoring any file with this dot uh, txt or something so let's make a file dot class and we'll see this class dot class file is available on the our uh, you know remote remote uh, remote or not yeah. the vs code is it in the git or it's installed separately it's, it's in my local it's just a software just like team Okay. No, I'm just saying that because I took my, I removed mine to create more space in my computer. So uh, no problem. So we make a file DevOps dot class, right? And in this DevOps dot class, let's say we don't want this file to be in our, uh, uh, you know, remote. Right, remote repo. We don't want it to have there, right? And we, we, but we wanted to have it in the local. It could be my AWS credential or anything, right? So what we have done, we added that in the git ignore, right? So see the beauty. Now let's create another program file. Let's say create a new file and say this is the, my main uh, main file dot py, right? And here, um, here what I'm doing, I'm just uh, printing something. Let's say I'm printing. Uh, uh, this is my first Git code, right? Or my or my code or my first Git repo, right? This is my first Git repository, right? So we have two files. One is the uh, uh, this uh, main dot py, another one is the uh, devops dot class. We want this main dot file to be have in remote repo, but we wanted to this one should not be there, right? So the first command we learned that was uh, git add, right? But add, if you will do add, so it will say, uh, no, we, we don't have any reference, right? So you can do one thing, you can do git add dot. So it will add all the files, right? But if you wanted to add only main.py, so it will add this. Now, if you will say git status, so it will say this is the new file, right? It's saying, it's also saying in which branch you are. It's saying you are in the master. Okay, sounds good. So, okay. So git ignored, have ignored this file uh, already, right? So let's see if we wanted to have this also, right? So, Let's see if we get it or not. So this was a file dot class. So it's what is saying now? Can you read it for me? It's saying use uh, forcefully because it is uh, added in the git ignore. It's not allowing us to push this file. Okay, let's see the magic now. Let's add a git commit. Now we are putting it to the staging area, right? So git commit hyphen m the message. What we wanted to have the message. New code to repo just say new code okay so this is the commit one this is my commit one right and now this is my commit id if you will see here right okay now do get push origin origin means the branch which you are pushing it right so in my case it is currently master right you when you do run the get uh, get uh, uh, status you have seen this is the master one right so we'll say master okay it says uh, to allow um, done the code is here now if you will refresh previously there was only two file right now if you see now we have the git ignore file in git ignore file we have the same files but we don't have dot class file. We have the main file which we wanted to have here, right? It goes to the remote repository. Make sense? How did you connect the gate to the VS? Well, it's not just about the VS. You can do it with the other, you know, text editing tool also. It's not just the VS you should have. But so yeah. you went to the VS code and you pulled the file from the Git repository. 
yes yes i'll tell you the uh, how you will use the vs code also okay so anyone uh, wanted to share the screen and uh, do the hands on the uh, only for the one person other ones will follow it right uh, who's sharing who's sharing who's sharing who's sharing who wanted to have a quick hands on I right now all this you just did. I'm still trying to process it, but I do have a GitHub account. Also, most of you have a GitHub account. So I don't know, but like, but maybe someone else to, should like, share. Yeah. Let me see yeah. again. Don't I don't have. I don't have a Git account, but I don't know the screen I'm using is not shaping my. It's not having my account. No problem, no problem. Okay, uh, yeah, please share your screen. We'll you know, uh, start from this scratch. America, you want to share? Oh no. I deleted the VS code on my computer. So I don't okay, know let me share code. because I have the VS code and I have them. I don't know anything about you. Guys, anyone can share. Yeah. I don't have the VS code. I'm sharing now. Let me sign it to my GitHub. Go to the GitHub.com. Okay. The browser itself. Put a new tab here only. <laughs> 